I said, uh, I am a brand designer at Medium. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you to everyone that uh, brought me here, Alexander, uh, Ellen. Uh, it's been really great. You didn't have to do that, honestly. It's, it's, yeah, it's really nice of you guys. Um, so yeah, so today I'm going to talk about introspection and how that kind of informs my work. Um, I quote this uh, piece from James Baldwin when he talks about the moral responsibility of an artist, um, and he talks about how you know before you can really conquer the world, the physical world, you have to kind of really understand yourself a little bit better. And through the projects that I kind of went uh, made personal work and some of my thesis work and some of my early work, I just found that that had really fueled the kind of work that I wanted to do um, in editorial, and I'm really excited about telling stories in general. So yeah, this is, I'm just gonna take you through a few projects that I have done in the past couple years and just show my creative process. So to start, um, I got interested into graphic design at a pretty early age, I was about 12 or so. My brother went to a high school where he had, um, he went to a trade high school where he did graphic design as his trade and I found out what Photoshop was and that was really cool and then um, I found out what MySpace was, which was fun and <laughs> then a lot of the graphic designers on MySpace I kind of envied and I was like, oh, I actually really like doing this and so I just based it, based a lot of my work on like the form of what I was seeing at the time and using fonts and not really knowing what I was doing at the time, but looking back, I'm like, oh, it's not that bad, actually. Uh, but yeah, it was really fun to do all that stuff. I spent most of my summers like in high school just kind of working on personal projects like this and a lot of selfies with my point and shoot. Um, but yeah, fast forwarding to almost like 10 years later. Uh, at the University of Connecticut, we had our thesis project. Uh, I had my thesis project that I wanted to really tackle the idea of uh, homophobia in the black culture, specifically with men, and also the color pink, because I'm, as you'll see in my work, that I really like the color pink. And I wanted to tackle that as like a really broad thing, like a really intensive case study with an exhaustive title, but I only had a semester to work on it, so I figured I should probably tone it down a bit. But when I started to put the project together, I started to realize that as I was writing about my own experiences and trying to figure out what I wanted to say, it actually started to inform my work in a way that I didn't actually know it could before. And I got a lot more clarity in terms of like, again, what I was trying to say, but also unpacking like what I was you know, what my stance was on this topic in general. So, I went as far as to dye my hair pink. Um, it was a dark time. But, <laughs> the yeah, so through that exercise, I really just started to understand and like, I don't know, just really be in a place of just like honesty with myself um, and trying to figure out my own identity as a designer. Um, So what I did was kind of just like start to think about what it is I was trying to say. So I wrote a list of all the things that boys can do. And I was like, all I want to do is talk about boys and men and like toxic masculinity, but in terms of like an, in an optimistic way and just saying like, we can do all these things. And I started writing this list of like, boys can do this, boys can do that. And I was like, oh, I'm saying can a lot. So I put on a can and that's, <laughs> and that's basically it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been, it was really fun to just explore form in this way and just think of new ideas and talk like, you know, talk about this pretty intense subject matter, at least for me, and pretty sensitive subject matter in a way that, you know, really was lighthearted, but also really educational. Um, and it was also really crucial for me to tell a story about, uh, my experience as a black individual who, you know, growing up and studying design, like there's not too many black uh, graphic designers or type designers that at least I studied or I knew of. And so it was really important for me to kind of sh tell my experience or show my experience in this uh, 
array of projects where I'm being funny and I'm, or at least I'm trying to be, and I'm, you know, being lighthearted about it, but it's just an experience that I don't think that a lot of people are familiar with, and I want to kind of just let people know where I was at. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, this is the tool zine that I made. Um, it's just a, it's just a zine about tools. Um, <laughs> it's uh, nothing suggestive at all, but it's, yeah. Um, was having fun with it, basically, was my goal. Um, so yeah, and then I started to create a few different worlds in this project, and I was like, oh man, like this would be great. So I created this thing called the Wholesome Boys Club, and it was a camp where boys who were basically assholes um, went there. It's a fictional thing, like it's based in like the 70s, and um, they went there to become like wholesome boys. I made a, like a brochure, and I made these t-shirts, and I displayed them amongst all the other uh, explorations that I did. Um, so yeah, so what I really wanted to do with this project, just to kind of wrap it up, is um, create these small vignettes of my experience through a lot of different forms and a lot of different ways of talking about it, um, but also putting it in like a typical masculine space and turning it really pink. Um, it was really fun because when the light was shining, you could see like the pink radiating on the people that were actually like uh, viewing it. So it was, came out even better than I wanted to. But yeah, so doing all this work really kind of made me realize like looking inward first really helps me explore. And looking inward first and exploring broadly really helped me like filter out my own perspective on the work and kind of understanding like what it is I wanted to say, what is what it was that I'm interested in, and also like how to you know, make, make cool stuff and, yeah, I'm not nervous at all, I promise. Um, so yeah, uh, fast forwarding to after graduation, I moved back home for like two minutes it felt like and then I got a job offer in New York and I made it out to New York and this is a big part of my influence of like why I wanted to move to New York. There's a show called How to Make in America it was on HBO like a f back when I was in high school, and it was about these two guys who wanted to start a streetwear company. And they showed the, um, the they showed the scenes of New York in a really like interesting and like honest way. The apartments were really small, and it didn't like glamorize it, and it made it seem like it was really hard. But I still wanted to move here. <laughs> so um, one day um, I was just thinking like, oh cool, I finally made it. Like I wanna just make a poster and kind of say like, hey, cool, I, I'm here guys. <laughs> um, but this project was purely inspired by just the form of just type in general. I wanted to play with things that I hadn't played with before using AUG again, but also taking inspiration of like, oh, what would it be like if I made like a tabloid or like New York Post-esque thing that was type only and I just deconstructed it. But also paying homage to the show graphic, uh, the t-shirt on the show, that really meant a lot to me. Um, but yeah, I was really just having fun, making sure that I was creating stuff that I was interested in, even outside of work or outside of, you know, whatever else was going on in my life and making time to make work, basically. So fast forwarding, uh, we're kind of going all around the place, um, backtracking a little bit to design one. I uh, when we were learning about the grid and hierarchy and type, I was, uh, we were prompted with this project of making a playlist. And I was like, oh, cool, that's really awesome. I love making playlists. And I was, we, you know, we weren't allowed to use color or um, any imagery at all, so that was kind of annoying. But then, <laughs> and then I got home or got back to my dorm after and I was like, oh, cool, like, now that this project's over, like, let me make one. And it kind of started to turn into this like brief of source, I guess. And you just like, I just started to make these playlists like over time. So basically I collected a good amount of music. And after a while I was like, oh yeah, like cool. I wanna like make it about this or maybe it's a playlist about that or, um, but yeah, so I did a few of those and 
this was one of my favorite ones that I'm going to talk about. So this one is called Groove. Um, I spelled it incorrectly. And I just wanted to do a project and make type that I hadn't seen before, basically. I used it, the idea of a circle and was like, oh, cool. Like, How can I take this circle and turn it into letter forms that at least I haven't you know, seen or like even thought of or kind of just was it exploring on Illustrator. Um, sorry to all the type designers who are probably cringing at that. Um, but yeah, and so I took that type and started to create uh, this world around it. So at the time, I was, list I was reading uh, Bruno Minari's book, A Designer's Art, and I wanted to make a cover of like what that music sounded like or sounded like to me, make it look like what it sounded like. And yeah, there's not too much to this. I just was really exploring with stuff, and I wanted to use these playlists as almost like a life update. And so that leads me to my next one uh, called Lavion. So this project happened. Uh, so this happened over a period of time while I was uh, starting at Medium, and I was kind of like moving or flying back and forth to from San Francisco to uh, New York, and. I was on the plane a lot more than I had ever been in my life, so I was getting really uh, interested in like all the type that was around me on like my boarding pass or like my or just like in airports in general. But then also the music that I was listening to inspired a lot of this cover because I was um, listening to a lot of French like '60s French pop at the time. Um, my my dad also used to listen to that a lot, and it kind of made me realize like, oh man, I'm turning to my Tibet into my dad, um, but also this typeface that it set in at the top was um, something that I created called Brutal. Um, it's a typeface that I haven't finished and I probably won't ever finish, um, but again, just exploring different ways of making type and um, using a lot of different typefaces on the cover too, like I'm using Windsor and, uh, and Futura and uh, Eurostyle, but also taking like imagery from the boarding pass, like my uh, barcode that I just cut up and kind of made on, um, made into that, and the metadata also is like uh, inspired by my boarding pass, but also is accurate information of like what actually, um, what reflected on my boarding pass, which was interesting to me, because I started to realize like my love of storytelling in general and translating it through type, and taking that metadata and turning it to, into that like aha moment in a way if you kind of like really read into the details. Um, so yeah, it, it, this is something that I really just did for fun and I'm really happy to talk to you guys about it because I never thought I'd talk about playlist covers um, in front of a live audience, which is cool because I just do them in my room. <laughs> and so as I kind of just like go through all these projects and especially as I was like putting it together, I started to realize that, um, you know, James Baldwin was kind of right when he said, you know, the role of an artist is to kind of just take uh, take what you know about yourself, learn more about yourself, and really just like I don't know <laughs> what am I trying to say. The the idea of just taking more. Um, yeah, so basically just my introspection um, helping me understand how to, you know, better myself and also tell stories that will uh, better connect with people because I was really interested in human connection in general. And I think that, you know, in order to tell better stories you, and begin to know yourself, uh, you can't really begin to know and understand others before you know and un understand yourself is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, that brings me to my work at Medium. Um, also, I just wanted to say to you that I could not have done any of this work without the help of the brand team and the whole design team at Medium who are graciously here today, which is awesome. Thank you guys for coming. Um, yeah, I was really lucky enough to work on projects that had so much expression. Um, we, we did a series of collection covers, uh, and we took curated stories from the edit team and made these 
uh, covers, and we did them pretty rapidly. It was really fun to just kind of like bang them out like every, like two every week or so, and just make these things that were uh, being broadcast to the wider audience, but also which is about these really specific topics that were kind of awesome to um, be a part of. And it's 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 fun too because I started to when I when I started at Medium, I didn't really know that I would love editorial design as much as I do because it is a really big responsibility. Like you're translating these stories for authors um, and kind of visualizing them for them. And it's it's a big responsibility just in terms of making sure you get that right. And a part of that introspection that really fueled my work in the stuff before really helped me kind of understand like being objective and also being honest and being genuine about the work helped me kind of be sensitive and objective to other types of work and other types of stories. And I really want to help people tell these other types of stories and visualize those things for them. And yeah, it, you got to be, you got to be on top of that really. But um, I think that to, with that too, like with this being like kind of sometimes people's first touch point with these stories, like when you go in a, in a bookstore and you see the, um, the books on the shelves or you see the, these covers on the site, you're like, oh cool, like what is that? And that is kind of what brings you in there. So if you can do that and also resonate with them as a person and resonate with the story, then I feel like you've, you've done your job well. But yeah, I'm just gonna go to a few of these. Uh, this one is the first one I did actually, it's called Man Interrupted. Um, this is a collection of stories about the meaning of masculinity today. So again, it kind of just like ties into all other things that I was interested in. Um, but I wanted to use this type to kind of just show how, you know, the legacy of masculinity has kind of been and make it pink again. <laughs> um, and I use this type to like, it was really like monolithic and just takes up all the space at the top. Um, gives no room for anything else, not even the comma, so pushes it down to the next line. Um, and I thought that was interesting. It was pretty risky, and I'm glad that no one like called me out on that, but it's, yeah, it was fun. And it was awesome to get to explore with that, because um, we were making a lot too in, in, a good, in a short amount of time. So this is a column um, about feminism by uh, Jessica Valenti. She, uh, I, we wanted to do something a little bit more um, simple with this, so I kind of just took Og again and made this pretty interesting, like, uh, double S, but I wanted to keep it at that, but I also didn't want to, like, lose it, um, you know, lose its meaning in general, so I kind of took the green and filled it up 80% of the way and to represent the kind of, like, wage gap, um, the gender wage gap, but also, you know, not go too into that, but it was, this one is um, called How to Even. It's a satirical self-help column. Um, I took my inspiration from like the more you know. Um, this is using Beastly, which isn't even out yet, actually. Um, I luckily, thankfully enough, got um, a friend to <laughs> get that for us, and uh, she, she had been integral to uh, the work that we had done at Medium at that time. Um, so yeah, this one is uh, free money. It's pretty simple. It's about the collection that, uh, it's a collection that um, explores the possibilities of the universe of basic income. Um, and so I wanted to make just a really clear, simple uh, statement here, but also just like explore with not using type as much or using handwriting or just kind of letting the image do the talking in a way and also kind of showcase like how simple this could be if you know, we wanted to do it. This one is where I started to get into like animating covers again, um, which can sometimes be annoying for my team because I'm always like, oh, let's like animate this. And they're like, no, we don't have that much time. Um, but, oh, sorry. Um, but yeah, this is a cover called um, Near Death Experiences uh, by Mitch Album, the author of The Five People You Meet in Heaven. And this is about the, um, their stories and their like, uh, their near death experiences. So. I'm not sure if it's animating here actually, but um, the idea is that it goes up and kind of stops halfway and also is like a blue screen of death at the same time, um, which is kind of fun. Yeah. So yeah, this one is called Office Politics. 
again using more paint. And uh, this is an advice like column for like navigating power dynamics um, in the daily like work life. And I wanted to play with the like passive aggressiveness and memos, um, but also use ASCII type to kind of like reference like the ex explorations that really happened um, with that stuff. Like that was really cool work, and I, we found this. Um, I, I don't know if you would call it a foundry, but they had these um, generators where you could, they had type that was set in ASCII and you can kind of like modify and use it in whatever way you wanted. So this is an example of me using that. And again, just exploring form and just having fun with type in general and adding more pink where I can. And yeah, this one is called The New New. This is our November issue for Medium Magazine. We took this um, idea of mitosis and um, with this magazine being about like social and techno technological changes, um, you know, I was thinking about like, oh, you know, change is kind of like, inter like interesting because, uh, and the idea of new is interesting because we just don't, we, it's been innately human to change and uh, kind of, it's, it's, it's in us literally, like we go through, <laughs> we have, our cells go through mitosis and it's not a new thing, but it's, um, yeah, it made for a cool look graphic and we did some animation here too that didn't actually work out, but it was fun <laughs> regardless. Um, and yeah, and so that brings me to my last one actually. Um, this is the January issue of Medium Magazine. This is a f one of the last few ones that we did. Um, and this was just, yeah, predicting what type would look like or predicting what 2069 would look like and kind of just this chrome extended sharp grotesque thing um, that was just pretty simple, but again, just ex you know, uh, pushing type explorations that um, even further than I had been doing previously and just making sure that I'm having fun with the work. Um, made this with Ryan Hubbard, who is here today. Um, and we worked pretty closely on this one. And yeah, it's one of my favorite ones. But um, in the end, um, I think that all this work that I was able to do and my interest with editorial design had been fueled by all that introspective work that I had done and all the personal work. And it's been uh, important to my creative process and to make that kind of work. And I, I urge you guys to make these kind of like personal projects and t find time to do something. And I think that it can really influence how you work overall. But yeah, that's it. <laughs>